Before we get into that, we have to talk about let's talk a little bit about what happened last night because because that game between yeah. Virgi- West Virginia and Texas Tech was like crazy. Maybe maybe the most entertaining game of the season to date. Yeah. By I the know. way, by the way, I made fun of you for the Arizona State picks. Great calls on the over. You crushed that. Two overs. Two overs hit without a sweat. Two Wasn't overs even close. And, and the Oklahoma State under. I was three mm-hmm. for three last night in, in over unders, by the way. I got a couple yes, for you. Were. I got a couple. Yes, you were. Don't worry. I'm, I'm on it now. I think I figured out the uh, how to game the system. Uh, <laughs> no, oh, I, boy. Def- I definitely did not. But, oh, uh, boy. Mac McClung, Deuce McBride. Like, I just wanted to see the two of them on the court and nobody else. Because, you know, to me, again, West Virginia had some control over that game early. Texas Tech kind of hung around, fought back, went on that run, took control of the game. And you thought, okay, at this point, like, Texas Tech's going to win this one going away. Like, West Virginia couldn't score for a stretch there. And and then, to me, I think it just shows both these teams. I I think they both have enough to get to the Final Four. I'm not sure they're they're not both getting there. But I'm saying, like, their personnel, when you look at them both, they score it better overall than they've scored it in – in many recent years. Like, again, they got dudes that can make plays now off the bounce. Uh, Deuce McBride is awesome. Love him. And McClung, listen, he almost hit a shot to win it, and, and he had 30. What, he had 30 in, in a losing cause last night? Mm-hmm. He was re- – like, give Chris Beard credit. Whatever he has done, I don't know what the, the secret sauce is with, with Mac McClung, but he's figured it out because Mac McClung – was fun to watch, was way more under control, and has been for the last couple of weeks. Well, part of that is just that he's now on a team where he doesn't have to do everything. Like part of the part of the issue that he had at Georgetown was he was being asked to do everything. And when you're being asked to do everything, you're gonna have no, to no, take Akinjo some bad was shots. Pretty good. When they had yeah, but Akinjo, he was pretty good. Yeah, and and then Akinjo was gone for all of the the second semester of, of last season. So that's when everyone saw Mac McClung just hoisting up shots and shooting 30 something percent from three. So um, I think part of it is that, but he's definitely gotten better on the defensive end. He's bought in on the defensive end. Um, He his there's no question that his shot selection has gotten better. And there's probably reasons for that beyond just like Chris Beard's coaching. But um, I mean, there's a reason we've discussed this. There's a reason why Mac McClung and Texas tech just made perfect sense as a marriage. Now, as, as far as West Virginia is concerned, like, they cannot rely on having to shoot 12 for 19 from three to be able to win games. True. They True. have to get better defensively. Like that's yep. just, that, that's full stop. Um, they, so it's, I know that they're playing differently and I know it's like the four round one system. They're, and true. Yeah, they're shooting they, a ton of threes, in the but the it's still jarring to see West Virginia force four turnovers in a basketball game. It's still like, you just look at it. It's like, Holy shit. It's still jarring to see them give up straight line drives over and over and over again. So um, yes, you're right. Uh, they they were awesome last night. That was such an entertaining basketball game. And we saw just how good West Virginia can be at their ceiling. And the, the biggest part of it. And, and I think what, what kind of proves your point is that we know exactly what West Virginia has to do to improve, to be able to get to the point where they, they're a legitimate Final Four threat. That's get better defensively. Right. The one thing that Bob Huggins has proven the ability to do over the years is like manipulate his rosters and manipulate his teams to uh, to maximize what he has on the floor. Like you, people forget the the press Virginia teams, like they weren't supposed to be good. They were like 15 and 14, and then they had like Aaron Harris yep. and Terry Henderson transfer out. And then all of a sudden, boom, you got Javon Carter and Daxter Miles coming in as freshmen, completely changed the tone of that roster. They're pressing everywhere. They're forcing turnovers everywhere. And all of a sudden, like the next four years are the best four years of West Virginia basketball um, in, in recent memory, maybe probably since John Beeline. So, yep. um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that Bob Huggins will figure it out. I think that he has enough defensive players on the roster to be able to make this work. It's just a matter of uh, of, of getting this the, the mixture right. And I'll tell you what, it's a lot easier to have what you do wrong exposed and still win a game than it is to have what you do wrong exposed and lose. Like that's the biggest thing that happened last night. We all know like they can't guard anyone. They can't keep anyone in front. Straight line drive, straight line drive, no turnover, open three, completely losing Mac McClung in a half court, but they still won. So like. That's that's the best case scenario right there. 